Hi, I'm Andy Glass of Glass Impressions. A few months ago, a client came to me asking me to build her a bookcase that looked like a picture frame was leaning up against the wall. She brought me a picture she found online. I went to her office, I measured it up, and here's what I've come up with. It's an MDF carcass for the bookcase, MDF shelves, poplar face frames for the shelves, custom milled oak molding for the picture frame portion, and the carcass is painted the same color as her office walls and the molding or frame portion is stained the same color as her office furniture. Now I have 68 videos on YouTube and unfortunately the video gremlins finally got me. The first half of this footage uh, for this build, building the carcass portion, is gone. I don't know what happened to it so I'm going to describe to you how I got to that portion and then we'll kick into the footage that I have. In the lost footage I basically build the carcass portion of the bookcase and cut the shelves to lengthen width and drill the adjustable peg holes for the adjustable shelves. Now the sides, top and bottom and shelves are all 3 quarter inch MDF and the back is half inch MDF. Like I just said I drilled the adjustable peg holes in the side which was probably the most important thing to show you guys in the lost footage due to the angled sides but I will try to do a write up on my website on how I did that and show some pictures. But basically I cut everything to lengthen width according to my Google SketchUp file and used the track saw to cut the angled portion on the sides. Now the 2 inch poplar solid wood edge banding for the shelves helped prevent it from sagging and then I did put aluminum angle iron on the back side of the shelves to help the back from sagging. So let's head into that footage and let's finish this build up. Stick around, hope you enjoy. The beginning of the remaining footage starts with me working on adding the angle iron to the back of the shelves. I use a 3 quarter inch straight bit at the router table to make a few rabbits for the angle iron to sit in. At the miter saw, I use a regular blade to cut the aluminum angle iron to length. I mix up a batch of 5 minute epoxy and apply it by dragging it along the edge and then spread it evenly. I apply the angle iron to the shelves by wiggling it back and forth to get good contact. Then a bunch of spring clamps to apply pressure. With the shelves drying, we can begin by working on the base that the angled carcass will sit on. I cut the MDF parts to width at the table saw and cut them to length at the miter saw. I use a stop block to ensure the matching parts are identical in length. With all the parts cut to size, we can begin assembling the base. I apply regular yellow wood glue and use brad nails to hold everything together while the glue dries. With the base dry, we can apply glue and slide the top carcass on the base. I use paint cans and the weight of the top to ensure good downward force. I duck walk the top onto the bottom using one gallon paint cans to achieve the correct height to make the transfer easier. With the carcass drying, we can now work on the frame. I had a custom oak molding made for the project at my local milling shop. I had them make a crown molding design but remove the angled portions. I cut the frame segments to length on my miter saw with the help of a story stick to ensure the parts were exactly the same length as the parts were longer than my stop could be set to. Ensuring the parts are the exact same length is critical to having perfect miters. To ensure the miters stay closed for many generations, I use loose tenon joinery to make an extra strong joint. I use a little marking jig to ensure my mortises were placed in the same location on each side of the miter. In the past, I've used biscuits as well. With the mortises complete, I can insert the loose tenons. I test fit all four miters with loose tenons to make sure there's no surprises during the glue up. In order to achieve adequate clamping force across the miter, I take two small 12 inch parallel clamps and use them to apply clamping force across the joint. This technique worked very well. I should note I put a clamp on the bottom of the joint as well. The carcass is ready to be painted. I use my HVLP system to paint it the same color as the client's office walls. I first apply three coats of primer and then follow with three coats of paint. 
I also set up my temporary spray booth to paint the shelves. When the paint is dry, I use loose tenon joinery to secure the frame to the carcass. I tap in the loose tenon stock and dry fit the frame to the carcass to make sure there are no surprises during the glue up. With the dry fit a success, I apply multiple stains to achieve the color match to the client's office furniture. Through trial and error on some scrap stock, I apply one stain first, apply the second stain on top, then reapply the first stain again. When the stain was dry, I apply three coats of lacquer. In order to apply clamping force in the correct spot on the frame, I needed to make special clamping calls. They consist of two MDF parts with a saw kerf running down the middle. I glue them in an L to resist bowing and applying clamping force over a larger area. The saw kerf will slide over the edge where the cove begins. This is exactly where the MDF will be. I apply masking tape to the carcass to aid in cleaning up any glue squeeze out. The glue up was a bit stressful, but I applied a generous amount of glue to the loose tenons and the MDF carcass itself. I slid the frame in place and applied clamping force with the special calls we made earlier. I needed clamps with a throat capacity approaching 6 inches. I use simple quarter inch dowels for the pegs as they will be hidden. I hope you guys liked this project. It was really fun to build and I apologize for the missing footage. I'll do my best not to have that happen again. I want to thank the client for allowing me to build this project and bringing you guys along for the ride. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them. And as you can see, this bookcase is still in my shop and not in the client's home. So I encourage you to like me on Facebook and follow me on Instagram to see those final pictures of this picture frame bookcase in place. If you guys enjoyed this video, please smash that like button, share, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.